What are three things the internet really likes? Cats, saving money, and printing things big. Stick around because I'm going to combine all three. I'm Brian and you're watching BV3D. Before I get into the three things I mentioned, I wanted to bring something up. You may be familiar with the idea of a benchmarking print. It's a model that you print to see how well your printer can perform certain tasks, such as bridging gaps, how well it handles overhangs, small details, and the like. A good example is the 3D Benchy, available at 3dbenchy.com. At the 3dbenchy.com site, you can download the model and see all the things it's designed to test. Printing it can tell you a lot about your printer and help you figure out what adjustments you might need to make. There are also models which allow you to check your printer's dimensional accuracy, which is important if you're printing functional parts that are designed to work with real-world objects. If you're printing a camera mount, for example, you want to be sure that the thing you print comes out at the correct size. If your models are too large or too small, they won't fit correctly, and that's a problem. So, many people will print a 20mm calibration cube, such as this one from Thingiverse. It's thing number 1278865. A calibration cube is exactly 20 millimeters in each dimension. It's quick to print, and when you're done, you measure the result to see if you need to make any adjustments to your printer. When you get done printing a 3D Benchy, you've got a fun little model that you can keep on your desk or give away to show off what you can do with your 3D printer. But when you get done printing a calibration cube, you have, eh, well, just a cube. It's boring. It's not really good for much after it's done its job. I guess you could use some stickers or a marker or something and turn it into a D6. Roll for initiative! So, why print out a boring calibration cube when you could print out one of these? A Calicat! Yes, a Calicat. A calibration cat. It's Thingiverse Thing 1545913. It still functions as a calibration print. The body is still 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters, but the height is 35 millimeters. It has a few overhangs and the tail prints at a 45 degree angle, so it also tests those aspects of your printer's abilities. It's still a useful print, and when you're done, you can keep it on your desk next to your Benchy, or again, give it away as an example of what you can make with a 3D printer. So, that's a Calicat at 100% size. Can we go bigger? Sure. Here's a Calicat at 200% size. But, can we still go bigger? You bet. Here's a Calicat at 300% size. But let's go bigger. Five. Hundred percent. This is a monstrously large Calicat. He stands about five standard Calicats in height, and he's truly a magnificent beast. Now, as cool as that giant Calicat is, so far I've only covered cats and printing things big. There was one other thing. Oh yeah, saving money. Everyone likes saving money, and guess what? This particular Calicat is happy to oblige because it's also a bank. Check it out. Got a coin slot in the top and a TPU plug in the bottom so you can make withdrawals every now and then. So, how did I do that? Well, I spent a bit of time in Tinkercad. I cut the model into pieces and hollowed it out. And then I added the coin slot and the plug. Now, I'm 90% sure there's a better way to do this, but Tinkercad is a tool that I had available. If you've got some suggestions on how to hollow out a solid model, I would love to hear them. Leave a comment down below and let me know. So to start with, I imported the Calicat into Tinkercad, and I wanted to scale him up to a, a pretty large size. Now I've got two printers, and the smaller of the two maxes out at about 180 millimeters on the z-axis. So that's where I sized this guy. Get him just about where I want him, and then I can continue working on him. So once I got him sized the way I wanted them, I duplicated them several times because I wanted to be able to operate on different pieces of the model. So let me get these guys moved off to the side a little bit. A few over here. Put this guy here kind of in the center. So in order to get this model cut up into different pieces, I grabbed a, uh, a whole piece and decided I was going to size this to cut away the body and just leave the head. So I drag this part out to where it covers the, the lower half of the body and then I'm going to increase the height of it to get to the bottom of the head. And that looks about right. 
And I also don't want that little tip of the tail hanging out there, so I'm going to take care of that as well. So with those holes in place, I can group those three objects, the entire calicat and the two hole pieces. And that should leave just the head. So now that I've got the disembodied head of the calicat, I'm going to go ahead and rotate it 180 degrees just to make things a little easier on myself. Hey, wait, get back here. So I'm also going to drop this down um, to, the, uh, to the work surface there. So down we go, drag in, down we go. Just, eh, easier just to set that to zero. There we go. I'm going to grab a hole and I'm going to place this in such a way that it's going to hollow out the inside of the head. So let me bring this up a little bit because I want to get it uh, just above the, the flat spot on the head. So we'll have some material in there to act as the sort of the top of all of this. So let's go ahead and get that whole piece sized the way we need it. Let's get it dragged out to about the right dimensions, pull it up above the, the top of this. We can pull these bits in, and we'll spin this around to the back side, make sure we get that inset the way we want it. That looks just about right. Let's come back around the front and check. I want to make sure I'm not cutting out the hollows for the eyes. I think bump that in just a smidgen. Should be good. And then we can group those two pieces together. We'll select them both and then we'll group them. And that should hollow out the head. And just to save you guys from the, uh, the boring aspect of all this, I essentially repeated this process for the other body parts. And then once I had all of the pieces hollowed out, I went ahead and added the coin slot and I cut out the hole in the bottom to be able to remove the coins later. And then I designed a, a plug to fit. I then took all of the pieces and lined them all back up and put them all back together, grouped them, and then I exported that file out to Slice. Alright, so now that I've got that Calicat all hollowed out and exported, I'll go ahead and bring it into the Slicer. And there he is in all his magnificent glory. Now, when I printed the 200% and 300% size Calicats, I printed them with no infill, and I was pretty happy with the result. They came out great, and they're pretty light because they don't have a lot of plastic inside them. The big cat, though, was different. It's got that coin slot to worry about. Now, in the slicer, I didn't want to have to worry about removing a bunch of supports from the inside of the model. Uh, so, I've got the uh, coin removal hole on the bottom, and that is pretty much centered on the coin slot on the top. And so if I turn on supports only on the build plate, then it should build some support up through that hole and it won't mess with the rest of the interior of the model. I need to go over to print settings and I want to go to support material, which I want to enable. And the tail is at 45 degrees, but I know it'll print fine without support. So I'm going to set the overhang threshold to 50 degrees. And I am also going to say that I only want supports uh, for things that are on the build plate. I don't want it inside the, the rest of the model. So if I go and slice it, we should be able to check that we get what we want. And it's got a few supports on the sides that I don't really think it needs, but I can't remove them. It supports the nose, but we've got that, that one big column of support right up through the middle, which is exactly what we need to be able to support that coin slot when we get to the top. So we'll go ahead and export this and then we can start the print. So we'll go ahead and, and do a quick time lapse. Unfortunately, due to the massive size of this model, I wasn't able to get the entire thing in frame for the duration of the time lapse. So uh, we've got most of it. We kind of get up to the nose, I think, is about as far as it goes. So it's going to go ahead and build up and you can see that we've got that support column coming up through the center to support the coin slot. So everything's working like it should. So in the end, we've accomplished our goal of combining cats, printing things big, and saving money. And I've now got a, a nice big Calicat bank that I can give to my daughter. <laughs> Come here.
You want a Calicat bank? Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're at the end of another fun episode. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. And if you like the episode, give it a thumbs up. And if you don't, give it a thumbs down. But either way, leave a comment and let me know what you like and what you don't. As usual, links to the models that we used in the episode are down in the description, along with channel support links. If you want to help out, it would be very much appreciated. And with that, we're done. Go print something cool.